which is in Singapore. We're currently stood in what they call the Jewel, and we could not visit this airport without visiting its crowning jewel. Yeah, I see what you did there. So this is a 10-story tall entertainment complex. I don't think there's any aviation that actually goes out of here. It's purely just for anybody who's planning on flying out of the airport to have something to do while they're here. And that's on top of everything else in all the terminals. Behind us, as you can see, there is definitely a waterfall. That is the world's tallest indoor waterfall. Now to find a lounge. We are in the Singapore Airport Blossom Lounge in Terminal 4 and we've collected enough data so now we have an official rating for it. We start off with food. When we did pick everything up then the quality of it was absolutely superb and it's only been rival by a couple of the lounges that we've visited so far. And on top of that, there's also some interesting choices of like brand name desserts that you can have. There's some really big breakfast bar and a salad bar, as well as a number of local cuisine options, all of which are delicious. So with that, then it's very much up there. The only limiting factor is that the range of choices was actually surprisingly small, which is why we're putting this at an eight. As for drinks, they actually have a pretty good selection. There is a spa water on tap, an orange juice on tap. They have a soda fountain machine, which serves all manner of pop. They have a really lovely coffee machine that makes you espressos, Americanos, cappuccinos, lattes. They have one beer. They have quite the selection of wines, actually red, white, and they do have liquor as well. The only reason that we're not rating them as highly is because other lounges that we've been to have bottled water for you to take with you, and they have more of a juice selection as well, and more than one beer option. So with that, we're rating this lounge a seven for drinks. Ever since we got into this lounge, then the cleanliness level has been superb. It's been practically spotless and there is regular cleaning pickups so with that we're giving this one a nine in terms of comfort this has a number of different seating configurations and they all offer a little something different whether it's a cubicle to work in and to have your privacy or a more comfortable lounge setup which i really like because you can always lie down on the couches or pick a chair that suits your back needs, <laughs> back and neck needs. So with that, we're giving it a nine out of 10. On the amenities front, there are showers, good Wi-Fi, plugs pretty much everywhere for your charging needs. And then on top of that, there's a little spa area, relaxation room with massage chairs and a variety of other bits. 
I think what the limiting factor to the amenities is though is just the size of this place. Because in comparison to lounges like the one that we visited in Muscat or Istanbul, then they had a massive floor space. And so with that, they make a pack of it, there's many other things that you can possibly shake a stick at. However, with this, it's a little bit smaller, but they do make good use of the space. So with that, then we're going to give the amenities on this an eight. So with that, the grand total for this lounge is 41 out of 50, which puts it up there in the upper echelon of lounges that we've been to so far. Anything in the 40s definitely would do that. I would also like to mention that this terminal, because that's all we can speak to, outside of the lounge is pretty amazing. It is very spacious. It looks immaculate. There's a ton of very, very comfortable looking seating options available. And they have a huge food court with tons of options. They even have a 7-Eleven if like a Burger King or a tea company or whatever it is, is out of your budget. And so the only benefit I can really think to being in a lounge in this airport is that you could shower and the food and drinks are free because the Wi-Fi outside of this lounge was also easy to access. So this just seems like a wonderful airport to be in. and we've just arrived to our guest house in Uluwatu, Bali. The host actually picked us up from the airport and he is so friendly. He was telling us about how he used to work on cruise ships. He was giving us so much travel advice, like what to expect to pay for scooters or at the local markets and when we should negotiate versus when it's a marked price. And I'm sure that all that travel advice will be super helpful when we start exploring. We've got about three and a bit weeks here, so hopefully we will begin to find out the relatively quickly, but certainly getting that information straight off the bat is going to be infinitely useful. My ears are completely blocked, so I don't know if I'm yelling or whispering right now. My ears never equalized when we were descending in the plane, so... That's kind of a fun situation. And you're feeling a bit under the weather in the first place. Yeah, yourself, I it? have the sniffles, my nose is blocked, and my throat is a little bit sore, but I would classify this as like a minor cold. Like, I only have to blow my nose maybe like every couple hours kind of thing, so... And you only have to sniff every minute, it's okay. No, that's an exaggeration. <laughs> And then I guess the other thing we should share with you is about the visa situation mm, here because you might yes. find that pretty helpful. So the Indonesian government has started to introduce an e-visa system whereby you can opt to do everything online. We tried doing that when we were still in Singapore and honestly the website while theoretically will be fantastic, unfortunately it's not very well coded, it crashes pretty frequently, and you have to consistently refresh. It's so, a little clunky. Yeah, to the point where we kind of just gave up. And the reason for that is because you do also have the option to literally just get a visa on arrival. And by contrast, and maybe this will change over the next year or so, once the website is better and more intuitive, but certainly paying on arrival right now Super straightforward, very quick process. Literally, we rocked up, we were behind a couple of people, got back in Dover, gave in our passport, paid the fee, which was 45 Canadian dollars each. Yeah. And that was it. We got our visa, went through immigration, and that was you, all done within five minutes. And you can pay by 
cash or card, but if you're paying by card, it's an extra 2.5% per person. So better to have cash on you. And you can pay in any currency, it seems. Canadian dollars, US dollars, euros, pounds. Yeah, most major currencies from around the world. I think that's going to be us for the night, considering it is so late. I think we got a couple of snacks from the airport, uh, which we are going to munch on, and then we're going to think about turning in. Oh, and we totally got ripped off at the oh. airport. That's the other thing, is I'm that we were like, oh, we need to buy water. Mm -hmm. And so we bought water in the airport, and then I was like, you know, it's already 9.15. By the time we get picked up and where we're staying is 45 minutes away, and it's kind of a little isolated. We don't have a scooter yet. So I was like, we should probably get something while we're here as much as like, I know we're going to be paying too much for this. So the idiots that we are, we turned back into the terminal and went to the WH Smith and ended up paying through the nose for a bunch of snacks and some water. When actually, once you get past the arrivals and all of the cab drivers who are trying to get some business out of you, Literally, as soon as you go out the doors, there's a Circle K, which is about half the price. And to give you an idea, we paid 25,000 rupees for a 1.5 liter bottle of water inside the airport. And in the Circle K, it was 10,000 rupees less, which it's only a dollar less, but still, it's annoying. Yes. So, a few learning experiences for you, a few travel tips for you with the visa and where to buy your snacks if you're a late night arrival. But yeah, as you said, we're going to turn in. Indeed. Until next time, take care. And keep smiling.